Chum Lee's broken records. Convinced music records could make a comeback. Rick decides to put them on display. Finals making a comeback. Maybe we'll sell some of the stuff. You know, back when I was a... Really. Corey and Chumley both get to work putting vinyl records on the shelf under Rick's supervision till tragedy strikes. Back when I was a teenager, that's all you could buy was vinyl. Just the Beatles album. <laughs> you know what, Chum? You're paying for it. I am sick and tired of you breaking stuff around here. I mean, it's... Meet the Beatles, the first album. This is just like a remake or something, right? No, that's like one of the more expensive albums we have, Chum. A very angry Rick berates Chum Lee, who tries to wave the whole thing off. It's... The joke's on you. It's a Billy Ocean record. <laughs> we already found a few that were broken already. <laughs> that's good, Chum Lee. You, you like that, it. huh, boss? That's a good one. Just what? Just, just do, do your job. Hey, pops, catch. <laughs> In a shocking turn of events, Corey finds. Sometimes I can't help but hate these guys. They drive me up the wall, and they never know when to quit. Lottery ticket. Chumley brings his proposition of trying to win the lottery. It's a losing proposition. I'm just saying, it's a hundred million dollars. Maybe you guys should get some money together, and then I'll go down and get it, and you guys can buy me some tickets too. You got a better chance of getting struck by lightning. It's easy to get struck by lightning. Hold a big metal pole up in a rainstorm. <laughs> Don't say that, Corey. He might do it. Later in the day, Corey presents a scratch card he brought to Chum Lee. Sweet. I love these things. Match three like amounts, win that amount. All right, I'm feeling lucky. Chum Lee quickly gets to scratching the tickets while the Harrisons watch. All right, I got a 10,000 and a 50. All right, another 10,000. Chum, the odds are highly against it. What's that say? Holy <laughs> 10,000. It's $10,000. A quick scratch reveals Chumley might have won something much to the surprise of Rick and the old man. I don't need this. You guys can have that shirt. I don't need to work anymore. I'm rich. I'm, I'm going on vacation. Talk about dumb luck. You guys all realize the lottery ticket's fake, right? After Chumley makes his exit, Corey reveals a very shocking fact about the ticket. It's Completely bogus. Why, why would you do that? Go get him. Go get him. Give it a few minutes. <laughs> I think you went a little too far on this one, all right? He'll be back up in a minute. He'll read the back. He'll know it's fake. It won't be that bad. Corey tries to rectify his mistake after getting chastised by the old man and Rick. You got to get a hold of him and tell him this is a prank. He's going to spend a bunch of this money, and he's going to be screwed. All right, hold on. Chum just texted me. What? Call you back in 20 minutes just buying a ticket to the Cayman Islands. I won't have to pay taxes on the money there. Oh, Corey's calls eventually go through, and he breaks the news to Chum Lee. Chum, yeah. Yo, what's up, bro? You want me to get a ticket for you? <laughs> I wish, buddy, man. The ticket was just a joke, dude. It was one of those gagged lottery tickets. Chum, you don't have $10,000. The ticket is fake. It was a joke. The ticket's fake? I freaking quit work and I bought a ticket to the Cayman Islands. Dude, I'll, I'll, I'll pay for the Cayman Island tickets if you can't get a refund, buddy. I, di I didn't think you would act this fast. Why would you do this to me? Corey tries to right his wrong, but Chumley gets upset. I'm sorry, Chum. I'm sorry, buddy. I'm on my way. All right, bye, buddy. Sorry, man. Oh, does someone feel a little bit bad now? I hope it costs you $5,000 for his friggin' ticket. This is what happens when you joke around, son. Chumley and Corey meet at the shop's parking space, and Corey gets a shocking surprise. I'll pay you back for it. The ticket? You think your little fake lottery ticket fooled me? Come on, big hoss. 
So you knew it was a joke the whole time? I mean, I knew that ticket was fake. I get those all the time. I hand those out to people that are funny. So what have you been doing all day? Taking the day off, having a green smoothie. So you used a joke just to take the day off. You try to take advantage of me, big hoss. Don't be mad at backfired. Chum Lee's business card. In another episode of Pawn Stars, Chum Lee meets Rick to ask if he could get some business cards of his own. Who are you laughing at? No, I don't think so, Chum. I really don't want you representing the pawn shop with like business cards and stuff. Come on, man, I need to build up my clientele. If you had a business card, you'd have a title. He does have a title, Rick. Really JD. Chum, get back to work. Rick, who's not convinced of his need for a business card, sends him back to work, but eventually caves in. Give him some business cards. Don't put a title on them. Business cards to say Chumley. <laughs> Rick has Corey make the cards, but give him instructions on what to place on them. However, Corey decides to take a spin on them. Yeah! Thanks, Big Hoss. You spelled my name wrong. Oh, I'm sorry, dude. You did it on purpose. I can tell by the look on your face. Corey. You spelled, you spelled my name wrong. This ain't fair, look. So what's the problem? He put a space in it. It's one word. It's not that big of a deal. It's Chum Lee. Now I look like a jackass when I'm trying to flirt. The only reason you got cards is you want to pick up chicks? So? <sighs> Feet wine. When Rick and the old man get a vintage winemaker, Chum Lee decides to try his hand by making a bottle of wine. I decided I would learn how to make wine. I've done some research, and it's really not that hard. You just get some grapes and smash them up. I thought this was gonna feel kinda gross, but it actually feels pretty good. It kinda reminds me of a bath. This is gonna be so good. Chumley adds in his ingredients, even if he has no idea what he's doing. He stayed dedicated to his craft. I just finished stomping all the grapes, and it didn't quite look right, so I'm gonna add a little bit of red wine for color. Now all I gotta do is add the sugar and the yeast, and we'll have wine in a couple months. It smells kinda good. It kinda smells like wine already. All right, a couple months, we'll have some two buck chum. It's gonna be good. After having it ferment, Chumley decides to share the results of his projects with the Harrisons. How did you make it? I smashed the grapes, add some sugar, a couple pinches of yeast, let it ferment for a couple months, and you got wine. Where's been hiding this whole contraption for the past few months? You don't worry about where I hide stuff. <laughs> did you clean the bowl before you put the grapes in? Yep. You washed it out and sterilized. I didn't say the FDA approved it. <laughs> Would you guys just try it out? Just imagine how good it's gonna taste. <laughs> Chumley gets quizzed by Rick and the old man. He answers them, but gives an ambiguous reply on the process. <laughs> I've lived a few decades. I've lived through five wars. But drinking this wine just might kill me. Glasses up, folks. There's old toast in the Navy. Over the lips, through the gums. Watch out, stomach, here he comes. All right. Corey and Chumley don't take a liking to the wine, but the old man thinks the opposite. It's not that bad. It's, it's disgusting. It's not bad. I kind of like it. Are you serious? Oh, give me a glass. I'll finish it all. Whatever. 